Sean Haney here with realagriculture.com and Real Ag Radio, World Radio 147, Sirius XM. We got a really, really serious situation happening in Alberta. We've got a number of wildfires that are, I guess, I guess out there and creating a lot of damage. Uh, what's really concerning is the timing of the year. We're barely into May. And we're talking about uh, wildfires. It is quite amazing. Here to discuss some of the impact in the livestock industry in Alberta, it is Brad DeBow. He's a general manager for Alberta Beef Producers. Brad, great to chat with you. Hey, thanks very much for having me, Sean. Okay, Brad, talk about the situation. Um, how, how are these fires, how are they, I guess, first, let's start off here. Where are the fires mainly located? Well, as far as we understand and, and you know, just like everybody else, we're getting a lot of our information from media, but it's centralized mostly in the north or west of Edmonton, north in the Grand Prairie, south of there. Uh, there is fires, I do believe, north of Grand Prairie into the into the Fairview area. Uh, they're extremely widespread, extremely wide, widespread. We do know that we've had producers either very, very close or directly affected, um, but still waiting on, comp- you know, the, the confirmed numbers from who has been affected just because it's been such a fast moving situation. And, and is like, w- were we, like, were we really concerned heading here into the spring, the, how dry it was in these areas that this would be the outcome? What, what have you been hearing from some of your members? Well, you know, it, coming into the spring, even though we had, very significant snow for most of the province, not all of the province. There are certain areas that did not receive a runoff this this past year, mostly I would say in the central and eastern side of the province. But you know, it, it became apparent quite early on that we were in drier type conditions than, than we normally are. But to expect wildfires like this to to take off, no, I don't think anybody was really expecting that. Any idea at all on the number of ranchers or number of livestock that are impacted at this point? No, I can't. I can't give any sort of specific numbers. We have spoke to some of our delegates up in the area. Um, you know, they um, they weren't directly impacted, but the wildfires came very, very close to their operations. We do know that in a couple of circumstances, there have been some operations that have lost maybe just a handful, but I hesitate to go there yet because it's important to be able to do a full assessment of the situation once things have calmed down. You know, first and foremost, we've always got to think about human safety and of course, all the safety of the firefighters up there trying to get these things under control or or hopefully out uh so and of course we are always also thinking about the livestock end of things but we try to have a balance and make sure that people are safe and then try to get those animals to to uh, safer ground yeah there's evacuation of people in some ways is easier than evacuation of livestock. Um, I, I think that would be the case. What is what is happening with livestock that needs to be moved to a different location? Um, I, I know Alberta beef producers, you've got a website set up specifically for this. Talk, talk about what needs to happen. If somebody is interested or just where do they go? What do they do? Well, we are trying to provide as much information as possible to producers that are being affected, uh, providing the information around egg societies. There were some rodeos that were canceled. Those those facilities were being utilized to house animals that were in areas that, that were impacted. Um, auction markets are also opening their doors. So the best information that I can give producers right now is to call 3104455 again it's 3104455 that number will take them to resources where they can be be provided the information that they need to make the right decisions on where to go what's available out there um so we would encourage all of those individuals to be 
focusing in on that number. And of course, on abpdaily.com and our other social media channels, we're trying to provide as much information as up to date as possible to keep producers aware of where they could go and if they, if, if, uh, if they need to get cattle out uh, or livestock out. Uh, it's calving time for most producers. And so that adds a whole element of uh, another challenge. Uh, so, you know, everybody has got their own situation and, and they're gonna have to assess. Hopefully, you know, some producers may have implemented a bit of a plan in the event, uh, you know, you, they will have to assess their own situation and and make the decision that they feel is best for themselves first and foremost, and then of course the livestock after that. But important for producers to be aware that the three ten four four five five is a number that they can call uh, that will provide them with additional information that we might not have at this point in time. But we're trying to keep everything up to date as possible. Who? Who makes the decision on whether or not an area has to be evacuated? Is, is that the province? Is that up to the individual producer? What, what, like, what, what, what happens here in terms of the decision making? Like, obviously, there's, there's obviously areas that it's like it's a no brainer, have to evacuate, or else you know we're we're we people are gonna burn to death, uh, so to speak. Um, but in, in the other case, you know, there's like where you're not impacted, and there's a whole bunch of areas where there's probably fear or concern that the fire is headed in that direction. So who makes that call? I would suggest that, that that's coming from your emergency services, working with the municipalities, trying to determine just um, how much danger there is to people and, and, um, and livestock in those areas. Um, so I, I would defer that to emergency management services, working with municipalities determining the impact in in the areas being affected is there any best management practices when it comes to you know cultivating in some some strips or things like that are there any things that producers should be doing from a preventative standpoint uh, any info there well again it, you know they need to probably assess those situations for themselves and what they feel works best for them um, they need to have the equipment to be able to do that and in we know that in times of crisis, producers come together. They will work together, get equipment. Uh, I know I spoke to one delegate when his particular operation seemed to be not as, you know, in the line of fire, as if you might yeah. say, as much. Uh, you know, they were out working with other producers, trying to do their best to save as much as they could in the affected areas where the fire had was, you know, uh, in, in yeah. taking that line. So it, um, when it comes to best management practices, I think it's unique to each operation because of we are so different within our operations and and it's going to depend on you know how much probably forested area uh, where is the fire located to your structures your infrastructure uh, where is the best spot to move cattle that are calving that it might not you know we're talking some pretty significant herds in in that area five six hundred head um, it's not going to be easy to just load them up and, and get them out on liners. And of course, you know, evacuated areas, you can't have transport trucks going into. So it's, it's working together, trying to make the best decisions uh, that we can for ourselves and for the livestock that potentially could be affected. Brad, really appreciate you joining us here today. Thanks so much. It is a very serious situation that's impacting, of course, some of our, our great ranchers in the province of Alberta. And I wish everybody out there all the best and stay safe. So, Brad, thanks so much for being with us. Absolutely. And we we, the, we say the same thing, you know, wishing all of our producers the very best, um, you know, looking out for themselves and each other in a really difficult time and Alberta beef producers is is there for them in the sense that we will be assessing the situation trying to determine what those needs are as we start to see things settle down it so i just i, I should have asked this is there any emergency disaster relief uh some federal not, provincial money at this point or not that i am aware of of course we are very high level 
making uh, a list of things that we feel that producers will probably have been affected. Um, and so, you know, we're starting to put that together. We're trying to gather as much information to work with government at the provincial and federal level, if need be, to try and, and uh, you know, find those resources for producers and work with government to make sure that we uh, continue to look after our industry after this is uh, past us. Brad, thanks a lot. Take care.